You're from oh. Roxbury, Massachusetts? Yeah. Now, most Americans have no idea how racist Boston is. A lot of things I learned about racism that you don't learn unless you live in a place like Boston. It was a summer camp. I think I was 10. And this kid called me a nigger. This, this little white kid called me a nigger and ran. And I chased him. And he ran to where there was adults. And I grabbed him. And when I put my hands on him, I got thrown out of camp. I, I'm like, he called me a nigger. It's like, yeah, nigger. Uh, so I, I learned a lesson that you have the skin color of the enemy. I had to talk to him about a lot of things. You know, he, he only had me to come to. I had to be mom and dad, which most single parents do. And so you have to let them know that there's a black male child. People are always gonna judge you by what you look like. He was a good brother, a good older brother, taught me a lot of stuff. I remember we would go to the rec center every day and he would go play basketball with his friends and I would just sit there and I'd have my little book and I'd have to read my book and then I'd, I'd, I would have to talk about my book. He would say, well, what was the book about? I don't think you read that right. You need to read it again. I'm like, well, that's what it was. And he's like, no, that's not what it's about. And he would tell me what it was about. And I'm like, well, I didn't get that from it. And he would read it again. This is where it all began. This is the home of Patrice O'Neill, you know, better known to us as Bruiser. I guess you guys know him as Patrice O'Neill. We used to call him Bruiser. Uh, you know, wasn't uh, just a nickname because that's kind of what you give guys when they're 6'6", 350, 360, you know what I mean? <laughs> you give them big guy names, you know, you give them big, rough and tough names, so, you know? This was the spot. His house pretty much became the meeting spot. Yeah. Story after story, telling yeah. joke after joke. You know, comedy kind of was his thing, you know? Bruiser, big as he is, you know, dude wasn't the, wasn't the sexiest dude, you know what I mean? But he had the gift of gab. He had That's a mouthpiece. It. I've been fat all my life, so funny used to, it was a defense mechanism all the time. You walk in the room, and I used to go, I'm going to get a motherfucker before you get me. And I, I, I liked pretty girls, and I found out that I can laugh my way into some pretty pussy. I remember times where we're wondering like how to break ice, how to like, you know, approach, you know, females or whatever. Stuff, yeah. Bruiser would kind of like slice through all of that. Like, hey, yeah, it's whatever, you know? You know, you really, say hello to you, you better say hello back. Cause if you, start, you don't least, say hello and try to get at least, fancy with it, oh, at he least, jump all over you. At least. He, and he, and, he and it wasn't the typical fuck you bitch. Mm -mm. You know, it wasn't mm -mm. the typical, it wasn't that. He had to get personal. That. He was, completely personal. It was like, I'm gonna look at your shoes, what you're wearing, you're walking, right, Like, I know why you're here. Why y'all here with her? Your hairdo, you know what I mean? She driving, Hey, she's making your whole team look bad, you know what I mean? Like, man. Just exactly. roaster, roaster. <laughs> yeah.